how would you feel knowing that immortality were possible, but you could never afford it? When analyzing Jonah Nolan and Lisa Joy's tremendous, complex, and sometimes complicated HBO series Westworld, you can't help but wonder what else is permeating under the surface. What is the real purpose of the parks? As Westworld's second season struggles with one of the most palpable questions in artificial intelligence, isn't AI the key to immortality? It felt important to look at the other surrounding questions regarding this high concept and its repercussions. Likely by design, the show has introduced the beginnings of this eternal service intended for the top 0.1% of 0.1% of 0.1% of the world's population. And if Westworld's version of immortality were to play out as intended, it would have significant social and economic ramifications, the implications of which raises a lot of questions. Eternal life by way of technology and the uploading of the mind into a machine are not new concepts. Avatar, The Matrix, Altered Carbon by Richard Morgan all go to great lengths to explain their own intricacies of mind uploading. And recently it was San Junipero, the brilliant and moving episode of Black Mirror that offered a digital afterlife of sorts by way of mind uploading. Unlike this rare idealistic narrative, however, there's just something about Westworld's version that feels far less inclusive and that feels like it would have some major impact on the economy of the world presented. So, what does Westworld have to offer? Although the show has revealed a good amount of the purpose of Westworld, the economics and financial details are nothing if not complicated. I am in a dream. Regardless, Westworld and Delos Incorporated are able to operate at an apparently astronomical cost. Firstly, we know very little about the outside world of the show. Nothing about the value of their future dollar in comparison to ours, and nothing about a comparative rate for, say, a week at the days in during Westworld's time. But. On the other hand, we do know that in episode 5, during his saloon chat with Ford, the man in black suggests that they now live in a post-scarcity economy. Every need taken care of. There is still enough economic divide to have absurdly rich people who can afford Westworld and some who can't. But if everyone's basic needs are taken care of, then how does the system grow and can it be exploited? Delos, whose name is borrowed from the island of Delos near Mykonos, one of the most important mythological historical sites of Greek history, is founded and run by James Delos. Judging by the scope of its operation in 2018 dollars, it has an estimated market cap well into the hundreds of billions of dollars. It isn't known how long Delos has been around, although we know it's been around as long as if not much longer than the park itself. Trying to break down Delos Incorporated into parts, we are able to deduce that this tremendous company must have its arms in a wide array of fields and sciences. Biomechanical engineering. Although hosts are just bioengineered with 3D printers now as the company developed its own technology over time, we know at one point they were more robotic mechanical bodies. Microprocessing, likely possible with some sort of advanced microquantum computing. Artificial intelligence, they've created the systems and software to create believable intelligence with such complex programming that it has evidently reached self-awareness. Data mining, we'll get into more on this in a moment, but we know that they have the capabilities and capacity to mine and store the genetic information of their guests. Maritime activities. Dallas Incorporated deploys its own paramilitary force, as seen by the presence of an angular vessel resembling a stealth naval destroyer in the first episode of season two. All of this seminal development has merged into one groundbreaking and massive project. Delos Destinations Incorporated. This subsidiary oversees Westworld, its hosts, and parks. We know for certain there are at least six parks. Westworld, set in the American Old West as the primary vacation site and currently largest generator of revenue, Westworld utilizes all of these fields to create an immersive experience. There's also Shogun World, set in a feudal Japan-esque narrative, and Park 6, known simply as The Raj, which has a narrative looking much like colonial India. And while the other three parks have yet to be revealed, we're still hoping for Future World, as seen in the 1976 movie, and we're not holding out for Meow World, although we're not opposed. The running of said parks is a massive operation. It's been suggested that the park is roughly 200 miles in diameter with its own terraformed landscape, thousands of hosts and even more employees. Within those parks, Delos destinations can be broken down as such. Admission, lodging and preparation consultation, quality assurance, terraforming, construction, props, weapons, don't even get us started on the logic behind this technology. Cleanup, reset crew, body shop, control room operations, behavior and diagnostics, division run by Bernard Lowe, narrative and design design division run by Lee Sizemore, park operations, food, waste, maintenance, plumbing. I mean, <laughs> what about all the facilities for the staff? Where do they live at Westworld? So many questions. To run all of this costs a lot of math. With no monetary information available about the capital investment Delos made in the parks, we decided to calculate what kind of revenue the park is bringing in. 
At a base price of nearly $40,000 a day, people can come and free themselves of any obligations or moral choices. This standard package starts guests at the very beginning of the park with a private consultation where we can pick hats and weapons. Fun! The silver package allows guests to bypass the pleasantries and move further into the park more quickly at $75,000 a day. Finally, gold offers the secret paths that bring guests straight to the outer fringes of the park for a mere $200,000 a day. Taking inflation into consideration, and this is purely speculative, the daily rate for the standard package is $12,000 a day in today's economy. So, on a first glance, it would appear to be affordable if you wanted to hand your soul to the credit overlords. But take into consideration the cost of traveling to where the park is, plus the cost of staying at Delos to prepare, plus the minimum of a weekly stay, plus insurance, host consultation, biometric monitoring, arbitration deposit, concierge fee. In today's dollars, it's somewhere in the $150,000 vacation range per person. In Westworld dollars, it's somewhere in the $350,000 range. And that's the standard package, the lowest plan option. And multiply that number by, let's say, a thousand guests at any given time, and you've got about $350 million in revenue per week, $18,200,000,000,000 a year. Is this enough money to justify operating the park on its own? Honestly, with a landmass roughly the size of Tulsa? No. So. How does Delos intend to make money? Firstly, we can assume all their tech advancements are for sale. If Delos was operating before Westworld with enough cash flow to save it from trouble at least once over the course of its approximately three decades of ownership with additional large capital infusions, they're swimming in the Benjamins. But eventually, they'd like to see gains from those investments. Show me the money. So, in Season 2, Episode 1, Bernard discovers a creepy drone host gathering data from another host cranial unit, and that it contains not only a record of the guest's experiences, but also the guest's DNA. This is immediately met with Charlotte's dismissal of his concern over this blatant invasion of privacy. We're not having that conversation, Bernard. This rather pressing idea in today's world shines a light on how data has become so valuable. It could be considered its own sort of currency. The applications to business and market analysis are countless. In season two, episode two, during a walkthrough of Sweetwater, William tries to convince James Delos that this data collection represents a means to radically improve traditional predictive analytics used by marketing, saying, Half of your marketing budget goes to trying to figure out what people want. This is the only place in the world where you get to see people for who they really are. Nobody's watching. Okay, so data has direct implications on business, but you already know that. This is a red herring. Sure, it's fucked up. And the measures taken by Westworld for gathering data are as obtrusive and exploitative as possible. But we know businesses gather information. This data is beneficial to the pre-Westworld businesses Delos Incorporated is concerned with. But it is not directly worth justifying Westworld's existence. It is not worth justifying the world's largest X-rated playground. The real work being done, and not very successfully, is the development of the human mind upload and its advancement towards creating a digital afterlife and potential immortality. We now know Dr. Robert Ford not only cheated death by reconstructing himself digitally within a cloud-based matrix-like simulacra of Westworld known as the Cradle, but that he has the ability to somehow control Bernard in the physical world. We have other business to attend to. From the repeated fidelity experiments on James Delos, it is fair to say that this so far has been unsuccessful. Who the fuck are you? What we don't know is, like Black Mirror's fictional uninterrupted consciousness, whether this stream of consciousness is the same consciousness Ford himself was experiencing, or if this is some kind of duplicate, created as a way for human Ford to continue to influence this narrative he set forth before Dolores killed him. This is important to note because the value of Westworld's version of mind uploading seems largely dependent on the fidelity of this consciousness, not only continuing from the moment it leaves the human body, but also as it is once again transferred into a new host body. This continuous fidelity has dire implications for the future of Westworld, a future which many have gone to great lengths to protect. Remember, economics is a dense branch of knowledge defined by the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services, but it is also largely concerned with the transfer of wealth. The laws of nature demand when an owner dies, their capacity to make decisions about the use of an entity is terminated, and ownership must be transferred. 
usually to other persons, often a spouse, an estate, or a trust. In most cases, mind uploading feels rooted in the fear of death, but in Westworld, not so much. It's rooted in something far more tangible, legacy. But what if you could maintain ownership of all your wealth for eternity? Why give it up? Supply and demand are typically referred to as the key forces that drive economics. This is a product so valuable, demand so high, it would tear the fabric of society as we know it wide open and create an entirely new class of human beings, much closer to gods than people. The immortal class would have such a profound effect on the marginalized than anything in the world has ever seen before. The disparity between the rich and the poor would become even more astronomical than it already is, and the world would likely regress. Westworld is acutely aware of this. It is, if nothing else, a timely story about what happens when the powerful take advantage of the disenfranchised, and they in turn fight back. Look at the narratives of each park. There's an awareness of history either through the slavery of the hosts or the colonial and feudal narratives taking place in each of the parks. If the human mind can be uploaded, but only by creating a new class of immortal elite, where our own personal wealth and status are maintained forever, if we leave nothing behind for future generations, then what is it that we really value as a society? Perhaps our legacy is nothing more than the data and the people who control our data, and therefore control the legacy of the human race. The question we should be asking is not, how much will immortality cost, but rather, what are we willing to sacrifice for our humanity? What a trip. Well, that's some food for thought. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all the things. See you next time.